Chris Sewell here, baseball card collector, investor, dealer in that order. Welcome everyone to this week's regular rollers. You all know the drill by now. This week's list is brought to you by Greg Morris Cards. More on them coming up in just a bit. We'll start with one sent in by Scott who wrote, uh, I honestly don't understand this and I wonder if you could shed some light. It's a PSA Gem Mint 10 96 Skybox Premium Kobe Rookie. They usually go for around $400. I noticed the comp here for $3,000. Someone actually pulled the trigger, but it just doesn't make sense given recent comps. I wondered if something shady was going on and I looked at the rest of the seller's listings, and what's funny is most of them were uh, severely marked way, way up in this manner. Don't get me wrong, a seller's entitled to list any price they desire, but the fact that one actually sold is what caught my eye. I noticed uh, the listing ended at exactly 8 a.m. on the dot, which seemed weirdly coincidental. Uh, last twist, the seller looks reputable with plenty of feedback and 100% positive. What could you, could be going on here? So I don't really know. I mean, I'm not sure, but I would guess that this is a legit sale, and there are sellers. It's sort of a selling strategy. Just price your stuff super duper high and just sit on it and if you do that you only need to sell you know one item every once in a while to sort of make the same amount of money now i think usually when you do that you end up selling nothing so i, th I think that strategy generally won't work but i do know sellers who do that uh, i personally find it you know quite annoying but uh, they are entitled to do that and I, that would be my guess as to what's going on here here's a funny one sent in by mark schlossberg who wrote I uh, bought this uh, $45 William Burgeon T205 VG condition. Aside from being a nice looking card over 100 years old, Burgeon holds a record that I believe will never be broken. While he was a good defensive catcher, he is absolutely the worst hitting position player to play in the major leagues by a wide margin. Here is a blurb from the uh, Wikipedia from his Wikipedia page. Burgeon was a fine defensive catcher whose dubious claim to fame was his offensive ineptitude. No one played in the majors as long as Bill Burgeon and hit so poorly. Burgeon had 3, 000, over 3,000 career at-bats and compiled a career batting average of 170, a record low for players with more than 2,500 plate appearances. Among position players, the next lowest career batting average is Billy Sullivan with 213, which is a remarkable .043 better than Burgeon. In 1909, Burgeon set another record for futility with a span of 45 consecutive at-bats without a base hit, which at the time was the longest streak ever by a position player. The record stood for 102 years and was broken in 2011. Yeah, it's funny, I didn't know that about Bill Burgeon, but... Always love that sort of stuff, you know, random tidbits about players who own, you know, random records, good or bad, like that one. This one sent it by Mark, who wrote, uh, Back in 2018, you sold me a 1991 Topps Desert Shield Ken Griffey Jr. SGC Mint 9. I've included the receipt attached to the email. I sent you an, a best offer of 150 and you accepted, which I appreciate it. Fast forward to 2022, and prices on the Desert Shields have gone way up. I always thought they would. Uh, what are your thoughts on 1991 Desert Shield graded cards? I also wanted to share you with you my personal Nolan Ryan Desert Shield collection, all graded PSA 10. The 91 Nolan Ryan were hard to get in uh, in 10s. I, I added the 2016 Nolan Ryan tribute PSA 10 as uh, cherry on top. What are your thoughts on 91 Desert Shield? So, yeah, congrats on buying that Griffey off me. That was a, definitely a great, a great purchase if you if you held on to it till now. But in the the 91 Desert Shields, I think I think they have something really going for them, and that is in the junk wax era, which is sort of late 80s, early 90s, you know, depending on what specific you know you know maybe 86 to 93 somewhere in there but you could go further back and further forward even there's just so few valuable cards because everything was mass produced and there were so many people who remember those years and like to, to collect those years and often they'll kind of want to buy some nicer stuff but so many of the cards from that years have so little value so the desert shields are one exception where uh they're very valuable from those years they're, they're semi you know kind of rare so it's actually you know something nice for for people from who really like that era to, to collect Next few were sent in by Will, who wrote, I know you've shown some of these types of cards, at least in previous videos, and I thought these were funny and nostalgic. Yeah, these are quite funny. 1988 Fleer, Tim Flannery. He's holding a surfboard for some reason. 1988 Sammy Stewart with about the uh, goofiest looking face you can imagine. 1991 Upper Deck Mickey Hatcher. Uh, it's a throwback to 1986 Fleer where he's got this like ridiculously large you know, catcher's mitt, and here he is with it again. Uh, this is sort of funny on the back of this 1990 Upper Deck Julio Machado card. If Julio Machado invites you over for a barbecue, you might pause before accepting. The favorite food of the 24-year-old Venezuelan is iguana. Okay, good to know. And I really like this one. This one's hilarious. 1987 tops John Henry Johnson. The write-up says John Henry uh, participated in Little League Ball. Shocker. This was sent by Patrick Road. I purchased this 2021 Panini One Once Upon a Time Platinum Auto out of five of Antonio Gates. As you can see, the listing is spelled incorrectly, allowing me to snag this one for under the radar and for a really good price considering the box costs uh, around six to seven hundred dollars. 
I believe Gates is a future Hall of Famer with just over 950 receptions, 11,000 plus yards, and 116 touchdowns to grab a card short printed to five and also autographed of one of the best tight ends in NFL history. For $35 plus shipping was too good to pass up. It's like icing on the cake for my 2021 rainbow as I have the gold vinyl auto one of one as well. I love collecting tight ends and to have such a dominant one come out of Detroit makes Detroiters and our whole state extremely proud. Yeah, I've, I've talked about this sort of thing, especially in football. Uh, if, you, if you just don't go for quarterbacks, I mean, you can pick up some all-time greats for very, very low prices. I mean, here you go. You know, future Hall of Fame tight end, numbered out of five, great-looking card, auto, you know, 35 bucks from a top, top, you know, brand product. You know, if this was a quarterback of note, this would be like a four-figure card. So if you just avoid the quarterbacks and the very, very, very top young names, you can, you can, you know, find really good ways to, to spend your money. This one sent by Richard, who wrote, I'm working on collecting a run of Hall of Fame rookies from 57 to 80, all graded SGC 5 or better. To add to my collection, I bought this Don Sutton rookie for $30 plus shipping, hoping to send it in and get a 5. When I sent it in, I didn't catch this, but it happened to be a 1966 Venezuelan tops. About one week later, I came back a 6, which is the highest grade from SGC for that card. Quite a bargain for a Venezuelan Hall of Fame rookie card in this condition yeah so from 1959 i think to 1967 uh some of the years not all of them but most of the years tops also put out a set in venezuela and they're called tops venezuelan and they have slightly different variation to the regular they look basically the same but will have sort of a, a, a light a sl slightly different card stock and a couple of the years have like different backs but some of them are really hard to identify the difference 1966 here is a good example uh, the Venezuelans are extremely hard to find, very, very rare, and very hard to get in high grade because they came with, uh, you, would, you, would, you would like stick them to a like an album, so they almost always have back damage. Uh, to get a six here, that is ultra high grade for a Venezuelan card from a, uh, from 1966. So yeah, you got a total total steal here. Well, you know, congratulations on that bargain. This one was sent in by Ryan who wrote, I was searching through an app we have in the UK called Vinted and came across a lot of NFL cards for sale. Is it had a vague picture of the box with some cards in it. I emailed the seller and asked for more pictures. Uh, scrolling through the pictures, I couldn't make out all the names, but I could see one Josh Allen, which seemed decent, and thought it would be worth an offer. Sent an offer of 50 pounds, which was accepted. With postage, it was 60 pounds total. Was pleasantly surprised when I received it to have a Nick Bosa Luminous Rookie Auto and a Josh Allen 2019 Luminous Bright Patch at a 25 as well as many other great numbered and auto cards. I put pictures at the bottom of the hits. Haven't included the Bosa or Allen cards in the pictures as I've sent them in for grading. Yeah, congrats. I mean, usually lots like this I recommend don't buy because often this is just sort of, uh, this sort of lots are, you know, a dealer trying to unload a whole bunch of cheap cards that are really hard to sell and not worth very much all in sort of one shot. But every once in a while, you'll sort of stumble upon one that has some, uh, some nice, nice, you know, pickups in there and looks like you did uh, really well here. This one was sent by Corey, who wrote, I thought you might find this fun. I've recently picked up a few Eddie Waitkiss cards off of eBay. Eddie is widely considered to be the inspiration for the movie The Natural, starring Robert Redford. I loved the movie growing up, and late one night started down a rabbit hole of research. Eddie was a really good player, uh, was shot by an obsessed fan. While Waitkiss is widely considered the inspiration, other names have popped up as a possibility as well. Bill uh, Jurgis, for example, I snagged one of his cards for good measure. I have no interest in whether I scored a deal or not. I just think they are fun conversation starters that's really cool I, I didn't uh, I didn't know that about Eddie Wakeis obviously I've seen the natural if you're a baseball fan and movie fan such as myself that's a that's a requirement but yeah very cool uh very cool pickups here a nice a nice background story two of these three purchases were made on Greg Morris cards who as I mentioned at the beginning is sponsoring this episode they are one of the top eBay sellers in the game for sports cards pr probably the top when it comes to selling raw vintage in particular they always provide high-res images of both the front and the back of every card. Very conservative but accurate grades. Combined shipping options. Just, just a great place to shop if you're putting you know, vintage sets together or if you're just a vintage collector in general. But not just vintage, but all cards. But again, vintage is sort of their, their bread and butter. I'm a customer of theirs as both a buyer and seller, and, and I highly recommend you check them out. I've included a link to their website and eBay store in the description below. Here's another just nice bargain pickup. This was sent by Matthew. And uh, you can see the, the lot went for $30, and it was mistake of the seller here is just putting a single card in the photo. You know, you, if you look at this listing, you would assume you're just buying the Fisk Rookie. And now the Fisk Rookie is worth well more than $30 in a BVG7. I don't know why it only went for $30. The Fisk Rookie alone is probably more like $50. But you can see the listing is Sports Hobby Box, and there's actually quite a bit more stuff in here. You know, there's uh, autographs. Here's a second-year Mario Lemieux, uh, patch card of Yadier Molina, you know, some unopened packs. 
uh, yeah, so great bargain here at $30. You know, again, the Fisk Rookie is worth well more than the price of admission, but uh, some other nice goodies as well. Congrats on that. This was ended by Dakota, who wrote, Made this purchase last night and was surprised to see it go so low. I've been a hockey collector my whole life, but got back into the hobby actively in the last couple of years. Always surprised to see Leaf products sell so cheap. They don't have licensing, which some don't like, but to have a chance to get a slabbed auto one of one from a Hall of Famer and a barrier breaker for the sport for about $40 can't be beat. Yeah, I mean, totally agree here. 2022 Leaf uh, Vibrance Willie O'Ree Auto 1 of 1. Uh, Willie O'Ree is the first black player in the NHL. He's basically the Jackie Robinson of, of hockey. I don't know if you can compare him to Jackie Robinson in terms of uh, greatness, but, you know, autograph here, 1 of 1. I mean, so I think $40 here is a uh, tremendously good price to pay for this card. This was sent by John, who wrote, I recently purchased a 2021 Panini Eminence Joe Montana 1 of 1 that included a 1-ounce bar of pure platinum for just slightly over $1,600 on eBay. I included a picture to show you. Wanted to ask you if you advise me getting this graded through PSA. Is it worth it, and how would you predict uh, its value after? It's by far the nicest card in my extensive collection. So, very cool card, but, uh, you know, I'll be honest, this is sort of outside my area of expertise. Uh, Ultra-modern, you know, cards like this, I, I don't really know a whole lot about them. Panini Eminence, I've definitely never, you know, bought a Panini Eminence card. Yeah, $30,000, you get 10 cards in the box, so you're paying $3,000 per card uh, if you were to buy an unopened box. I mean, in terms of whether you should get this graded, I, I would I would need to see the card up close. I would say if, uh, yeah, if, if everything looks really sharp about it, I mean, I can't quite tell from the photo here. It looks like it might have some light chipping on the edges, but I can't tell if that's a photo thing or not. If it looks really, really sharp, I think it's a very, very strong contender to be sent to uh, PSA. This was sent to my Adam, who wrote, My special needs brother is a big wrestling fan, and with our latest COVID boosters and clear tests, my wife and I went to visit him, and my other brother drove in as well. After lunch, I surprised him with these wrestling cards, and we opened up each pack. While we were not, uh, while there were not many good cards that year, it does have Bret Hart's rookie, and I was surprised to pull three of them. In addition, we got to the hard-to-find Bret Hart sticker, which in high grade sells for over $100. I'll send them into PSA and my brother can display them in his room. Great investment, maybe. The box may have paid for itself, but best uh, family moment in coming together to give my brothers a little joy and remind ourselves of the fun of opening packs and why I got into the hobby in the first place. This purchase made for great memories, and I can't put a price on that. Uh, and yes, we did try the 35-year-old 35, uh, 35 gum, and it was awful. And we'll finish on a vintage bargain. This was sent by Corey, who wrote, I purchased this Harmon Killebrew rookie in early July, and I think it's an undervalued card for the era. As you know, 1955 features two other legendary Hall of Famers, Roberto Clemente and Sandy Koufax. And while Clemente and Koufax are bigger names, uh, Killebrew was no slouch. For the same price point of $1,000, you can find a Clemente PSA 1 or a Koufax PSA 3. Uh, eat your Wheaties and don't run with scissors. Yeah, I totally agree. You know, this Killebrew kind of gets lost in this set a little bit. I mean, 1955... As two of the biggest rookies, uh, you know, of all time, and Sandy Koufax and Clemente, like you said, and Killebrew is really a third, you know, in, in here. But if it was any other year, Killebrew would probably be the most desired card in the set. But again, he kind of gets lost here. So a PSA seven, uh, super Hall of Famer. I mean, he's not he's not a low end Hall of Famer. He's a solid, let's say, mid level Hall of Famer. I don't know how you would say that, but a thousand bucks for a PSA seven. Yeah, I think I think that's. Uh, you know, a vintage bargain in the sense that it's a lot of bang for your buck for $1,000 to get a PSA 7 solid Hall of Fame rookie that's uh, 60, whatever it is, 65 years old at this point. But that's it for this week's regular rollers. Hope everyone had a good time, and thank you everyone for all the great submissions. Uh, whether I use your listing or not, I get, I get a lot, so a lot that I don't get to use, but I really appreciate it, and, uh, you know, keep them coming. And as Corey said, eat your Wheaties, and uh, don't run with scissors, and I'll add eat your vegetables and look both ways before crossing the street. And, uh, you know, any other life advice you have, uh, leave them in the comments and I'll mention them next time. Thanks, everyone.